All right, sir. Let's do it. Um, I'd like to call the July 24, 2018 um, Transportation Committee of the Douglas County Board of Commissioners to order. Are we doing this? Yes, sir. All right, thank you very much. Um, let's go ahead and first item on the agenda. Uh, we've, we've got a, a, a few items. Um, first thing is, let's talk about meeting minutes. Okay, I have the June 19, 2018 uh, meeting minutes before you, and we sent them out previously. Okay. Everybody had a chance to take a look at this? Um, yes, sir. Do we have, was everybody present, or do we have anybody? Uh, Commissioner Mulcair was present. Okay. okay, so we've got one abstain from this. Do I have a motion to approve the meeting minutes as, as presented? So second. Um, there we say aye. Aye. Uh, we got one abstain. So four. Right, what else we got next up? All right, uh, Commissioner, the first item on the agenda is, uh, at least in the sequence that we have it now, uh, is a, uh, an update on the public engagement uh, effort related to the multimodal uh, operation, the existing operation, and then uh, some discussion related to a possible additional activities uh, going forward related to that service and possibly uh, augmented service. Okay. Uh, Gary, I know we talked about this before. Is, um, Dan, uh, Dan, according to Sherry, Danielle is on her way. Yeah, I'm going to yeah, hold off. Or be, I mean, there's two things. There's the update and then there's ongoing, right? So, mm -hmm. um, who would you like to do, Gary? Um, Am I late? I would say we can move her toward toward the, the back of the agenda to give her time to get here. That's yeah. I'm fine. We, we're flexible. We, we're not going to um, belabor that. So we'll just move that um, agenda item. We, we can move that. If anybody has any disagreement, else we move it on. Okay. Excellent. Now the other, the second item on the agenda is, is related in a way, but uh, and that is the a discussion on the fixed route bus service. Uh, yeah. Uh, authorization, uh, the request for authorization or recommendation to move forward with the FTA application for the funding. And um, uh, along with that authorization, uh, recommendation for authorization to negotiate a, a third party uh, provider agreement uh, for bus service operations. Uh, okay. we, we could uh, defer that also to after the discussion on the outreach if you. So choose. Yeah, I mean, it's, let, let, let's entertain it for a moment. Um, we have um, a proposal that we have been considering for you know, some time now. Um, and up until this past Friday, we pretty much had an understanding of what we were at least considering. Um, and I, I want to at least use that as a time to, so we can all debrief ourselves um, going into this. This past Friday, um, the four of us, um, excluding uh, Commissioner Mulcair, and this is for you, Commissioner Mulcair, just mm -hmm. as a briefing. Mm -hmm. We met uh, with uh, Vice Chair of Hobbs County, Lisa Cuban. Uh, she is uh, right right next door to me, um, a very good, strong ally um, in Cobb County. And when I was um, in ACCG um, April 12th in Savannah, we, we connected and said, hey, we need to talk about transportation. Is there any reason, way we can sort of get together later on? I like, guess it was like, yes. So I reached out to her on May 11th and, and sort of initiated the conversation. It says, when would, you know, when would be a good time? They were currently in their budget cycle. So long story short, it came back around July last Friday is when we were able to get together. Um, and we met at the Epicenter, uh, which is on Riverside Parkway. Um, it's a facility owned by Warner Bank Church, which I happen to be a member, and so does she. And, and so we, we met there. Um, the, the cast of character was supposed to be um, the county administrator, well, I guess he's the county manager, but Mark's counterpart, Miguel's counterpart, and Gary's counterpart. I also had um, external affairs there, um, and I had a director of communications there um, as witness on what we're doing, what we're considering. Um, it was not a closed door meeting. I think, you know, we met out with little picnic tables and stuff, so this was not a closed meeting um, per se, but at the same point, um, you know, as any elected officials, we, we can have conversations with them really anybody. Um, and this was sort of to, to get our staff talking about, about you know, 
just what's going on in each other's world. And, and it turned out to be one of those where we had no real agenda. It was just more of a sure hit. What are you guys working on? What are we working on? And and so I'm gonna I'm gonna pause there because Commissioner Moker, it, it, it turned out to be something that you just didn't know when you walk into something like that. You don't know how closed or open uh, the person that you're meeting with. But this is I've never seen anything like that. You guys, have, they were like four peas. These two and their comment were like four peas in a pod. It was like well, it just sort of sat back and was like wow. And they really were very open. Um, you know their numbers, what they're working on, how old Coblink was. I mean it was just such a transparent conversation, but that was just me. And I was just sitting there and I, I mean, what did y'all see? What was the body language? Did you feel the same way? I mean, this is for him. Now, I was there. Very, very relaxed and cordial. Very much so. And, and frankly, we had had some discussions previously, not about this particular service. Uh, in fact, my last discussions with, uh, with them were, were related to the multi-use trail. So it is not unusual for us to engage with them on transportation issues. Right. It's just a, a, an extension of conversation. Understood. And, and just like I, I, we have meetings time to time, we bump into our peers and we have conversations, so do you. Right? And, and so we, we acknowledge that and even times we may reach out for intelligence um, and likewise. But this was, again, the timing of it was just the timing. It just happened to be this past Friday uh, that we were able to coordinate two administrations to be able to talk, uh, which I thought was um, very beautiful. But in that conversation, we got into this whole notion of what do you guys think about ATL? What do you think about transit? I mean, what's going on? Um, and they begin to share their, their ideas um, on what was going on. We, we uh, Commissioner Moker, we proffered up this whole notion of homes. And we just offered it up point blank, like, okay, guys, how can we work together and stuff? You know, we've got this system that we're considering these four routes. This is the one that stops, you know, we, we laid it out. I won't delay the whole thing, but we laid it out. Um, from, from Riverside over to home. And so they got their maps out. We had our maps. They pretty much, I mean, I mean, they just really crafted it right there. It says, and I guess having the right people in the, in the room at the right time sometimes makes a difference because um, our guys, obviously, I will put them up against anybody, but they had some very solid counterparts. And they were able to look at this, and it was the number 25, I think that was, the 25 and the 30, mm -hmm. um, on a, their version, 25 and 30 routes that they thought could be pretty amenable both on the maximum end, which the part that comes on Thornton today, and the 30 that hits the riverside. Is that correct? Yes. Right. And so um, so it was two opportunities that they saw that, that we could sort of you know help um, you know uh, share riders for the sake of the conversation. In other words, we could populate or pre -pop or populate their buses to a fuller extent, at least down the street. I'm gonna pause there guys, but then it's gonna get technical. So Miguel and Gary were playing. From there, once we they thought it was a, it was possible, what do you think? How will we shape that? And we'll talk about the maps that you do after fact that so but, but in that conversation. Well it, we would uh, as we got into more detailed discussions, it, it just so happens that they have been engaged in, in a similar process for their system in terms of what do their routes look like, what is the ridership, what are the needs. So it was, the discussion certainly was timely. Uh, they had in fact looked at uh, potentially adjusting some of the routes, uh, Route 30 being one of them. And so we got into the details of that discussion. Uh, it, it, it would be uh, a coordination issue that we would have to work through should the process go forward that, uh, you know, in terms of the timing, uh, we potentially our system could uh, engage their system at a particular uh, set of time so that it would be a seamless transition uh, out of the county and onto their system down to wherever they go. It just, it just seemed to be a good fit for a couple of reasons. Number one, we wouldn't, by connecting with their Route 30, we wouldn't have to go all the way into H.E. Homes. And number two, it would give Cobb an opportunity to pick up additional ridership with individuals transferring from our system. So it would be a benefit to both systems. It, 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 one of the things that, that just, you know, even when this first was proper last October, we, we had the route extension and you know, different revelations. I, I, I ride in number 30, and my mother's house is right there at, at Corner of Oak Ridge, right there uh, in Bleverage. So it's basically four stops down the epicenter and UI 20 off to AG Homes. So I've always been aware of that there. 
And it's always been this sort of the opportunity, like, well, I get the redundancy, but let's, let's talk about the regional. But again, unless you know, right, unless, unless you know, unless you've sort of gone outside of Douglas, you may not know that there was opportunity there. So, I mean, when I, when I, when I shared this with uh, Commissioner Cupid, who happened to be my mother's commissioner, um, and, and, and let her know, you know what we were thinking, there was a, a, an openness to sort of like, well, yeah, we're committed to this broader regional, remember? And then this conversation came out in our, our setting. And I think when did they say their budget was what twelve million? What what was the number they threw out? You got Mark? Do you remember? Mm, no, I don't remember. Do you? I don't remember, I don't remember the exact number, number, but it was pretty substantial. Yeah, I thought it was twelve million. It was, you know, obviously that's our two million six times give or take. Um, obviously, they're thirty years old. Um, you know, but it, it was. I mean, they were very open, and we, we recognized. But they understood the whole need of uh, um, the regional impact. They brought up the topic of. They had a three-year funding cycle, because remember I brought, Gary, remember I brought, of course I'm gonna bring it up, right? Like, well, we're looking at this CMAC grant, I mean, it's three years, we're having consideration for the bigger ATL at some point. It's like, well, yeah, we do do. Um, they're on a three-year cycle. So Commissioner Mokia, they're also having some funding mechanisms, but they're on the same type, I won't say constraints, but um, it, it has um, a season. It, it has a term associated with it where we all recognize that the broader ATL is coming. So it only made sense, in other words, um, it, it's not that we didn't anticipate it, but the fact is we were able to sit down and solve it right? um, as far as coming up with sort of um, a consideration. That being said, also what they also mentioned, and, uh, which was interesting, uh, this, this predates you, Mark, but I'm, I'm interested in your thoughts. They talked about bringing the train out of this to this McCobb's thoughts were. Um, this has nothing to do with Douglas per se, but they, they were very serious about that, that train. Um, bringing out this way. Do you remember that part of the conversation? Yes, yes sir. Uh, and that's the first time I've ever heard, and it, it was uh, not just sort of a concept, just like, well, that's part of the new, broader, like, okay, we're going to go here, let's go here. And again, they were focusing more on the six last, the full industrial, coming across from Holmes. Was it not Holmes to Thorn Road? Was that the concept? I think mm -hmm. so, yeah. All right. Which was like, ooh, interesting. All right. We always thought they would come across, and then, Mark, this is when we lean on your, your tech experience. Um, Eric was always under the impression that we could never come from H.E. Holmes um, up to Thornton Road because of the mountain, mm -hmm. the hill. Uh, in other words, the incline was too steep and the slope, once you got across the Chattahoochee and you started going up the Thornton Road hill, the incline was too steep. And he just thought that it, it was cost, that you wouldn't be able to get there. So in other words, you got to bore a hole into the mountain and then you'd have to kick some other escalator down like a Peachtree Center down and get there. And so the concept was, in his mind, was to go around the bend, come around the Bankhead Spur, come along 78 up there by the railroad tracks, etc. But I'm curious, not, not at this moment, but at some point, I'd love to get your, your obviously, your, your background on sort of the, how that would work. But if Cobb is going to do it, and this was our whole premise, we knew we could never afford it, right? In other words, you look at what it takes to, you know, when I went out first to meet with Marta, uh, when our delegation took me out to meet with uh, Representative Roger Bruce, it was our lobbyist, it was um, Donzella James, Kimberly Alexander. Uh, they took me out there to the headquarters and we had a chance to talk to them. And we, we recognized what it would take. And it's like, oh, we can't afford this by ourselves. In other words, we can put 10 down, but we could never pull the train by ourselves. And that was never the concept. That was back in 15. But you still need to understand the magnitude of what you were looking at. Right? Which is just going to be a good segue. Um, you, you, you always need to understand that one of the citizens says yesterday, well, if I'm going to look at a Mercedes, and I want to know, and you guys know I've used that analogy all the time, C-Class, E-Class, S-Class, and AMG as consideration. So I want to go to the best that's out there. You go buy a car, I want to see all the features that, that that car offers. And then compare it backwards to understand, well, I know I probably can only afford a C-Class at best, but I want to see the best of the best. And that was the whole point of having a conversation with Marta, which is, okay, give me an MOU so I can take back, okay, guys, let's decipher this thing. Open record is available for anybody, right? But I, get, I, I have the right to go and just like, well, I'm not going through all that. <laughs> can I get an MOU? Send me a copy of what y'all got. Clayton County, y'all send me a copy of what y'all just did with them. We want to be able to look at that and scale back to what fits us. So that's our AMG class. Then we looked at the Cobb, we looked at Cherokee, we looked at Carol as considerations and seeing where everybody's going. And so what you notice is that people recognizing that transportation was important, moving our people around was important. It was very important. 
Um, and we're not by ourselves. So then it came down to just simply, where do we go from here? Um, I, one thing I do want to bring out as I, I talked to all of them, especially when I was at MARTA, it was the technology component. You heard this in um, a meeting with mm -hmm. um, Cobb, um, Cherokee, who took over from Canton, because Canton could never, you know, Canton's system was failing because it was too small. Cherokee is a huge county, so it's a rural system. So back to that whole conversation, one route, but it's a rural system. And Mark, you, were you here then? Mm -hmm. you, yes, remember right. that? you remember, you guys remember, you know, not you, but Gary, you remember that. Mm -hmm. The big, big long routes and so forth. But technology was key. So one of the things I think that we think we can solve is the technology component where the um, continuity of service we can continue it. Because I see that as one obstacle I at least want to put on the table. Not an obstacle, but just something that we're going to have to address is technology. Oh, the only thing I've got to say that is you're exactly right. Yeah. yeah, and I think for any expansion in the area, uh, it has already been identified that whenever you have disparate systems, right. th there is a, a bit of a uh, uh, deficiency in the transfer between one and the other, the interaction between the systems. And so uh, with the concept of the ATL, uh, the more regional system, they are looking certainly at to having a seamless system transition between one operation and the other, whether it be one county or, or a city within a county, for it to be uh, seamless for, for the travelers. So uh, certainly the technology would have to be correlated with the more the operation. Now, now I'm, I'm gonna, again, we're just buying ourselves time. As long, but I'm going to bring up this whole point of, of continuity of travel. Um, when I was younger, uh, I used to be an international consultant, um, Hamburg, Germany, um, London, Japan, and Spain. Right? And so one of my key clients here in, in the Atlanta area was Delta Technology. It was about a $20 million contract. I was totally responsible for it. So I'm sure my colleague over here remembers um, Charlie Bill was Chief Technology Officer. He's a consultant out in Dallas. Vicky Escara, who we know as the senior, just all that for you know, the Atlanta trustee of the, you know, just a very prominent, very, so I, I'm, I'm on watch over there, but probably, uh, this is 90, late 90s, Mission Ball Care. Mm -hmm. but, but, but with that experience and listening, and this when I was young, but just listening to these guys talk about continuity of, 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 of routes. And so uh, my assignment was to negotiate the Air Mexico, career, um, Korean Air, Delta Airlines code share. So I had to, so in other words, they wanted to make sure that they're think about, well, we should only worry about our country. No, there needs to be a continuity to make sure people are able to travel all the way through a system, all the way where they got to go and come back. Right? So I'm using something I know you understand. It's like, well, I don't care how we get there, long as I can get where I got to go. So if I got to get on a taxi, to the 30, 30 to homes and a bus to my eye doctor, as long as I can continue seamlessly with that one car, I'm good. So the whole point about this code sharing storyline is that in, in Commissioner Walk, I, again, there's nothing to respond to other than, no, I think there's, a, there's an understanding that it can't just be I'm in my own world. That, okay, I can't be concerned about my, you know, I'm gonna move them around here, but it's like, okay, but I'm not just staying in Douglas. I'm, I'm just not gonna sit on this, this planet called Pluto, and that I recognize I gotta get to other places that I gotta get to. And, and so it's one of those where uh, this technology is key so that we can make sure people are seamless, right? That they can just keep all the way down and all the way back. And so that's something that technology is going to be key. Um, the private sector has, has identified that. Um, I, I think um, isolationist uh, approach to this, if we don't think about proactively, this ahead of time versus sort of reacting at the end where we're like, oops, we didn't really think about this, but we only cared about getting from here to there. We ain't worried about it. It's like, no, we're part of a bigger region. We, we, we can think better than that. Uh, we, we can think broader than that. Um, and, and some of us can bring to bear some real life experiences to make us a much richer place. So that being said, I don't, I don't want to belabor this. This was just buying our time to our friends got here to give us an update. But I'm going to leave it on this, um, Commissioner Moak here is that out of that came two options for um, consideration for the HE homes. Um, and, and really quickly, we're not gonna spend a lot of time, because again, we're gonna keep this at the Board of Commissioners, but at the same point, Gary, can you give him the courtesy of what the thoughts were based on your conversation with your colleague? Can you do that? Well, as, as I said, 
if we're able to make a connection uh, with Cobb to provide the service all the way into AT Homes, that opened up an opportunity for us to, to serve more residents of the Lithia Springs area. So um, we, we looked at what might be a possibility and we came up with, with two options. Uh, first, going east on Interstate 20, you would exit at Lee Road, go left up to South Sweetwater, uh, up to Skyview Drive and turn right on the Skyview, go all the way up Skyview, cross Thornton Road to Oak Ridge Road up to our parking lot area and also there's a car connection there. Uh, the Is that Route 8? That that's, eight. that's option A. Got it. Mm -hmm. uh, the second option is option B. Uh, again, you would go east on I-20 uh, to Lee Road, left on Lee Road, uh, up to South Sweetwater, but in, instead of turning on Skyview, you would, you would go all the way up to Highway 78, go east on Highway 78, and then turn right on to, to Thornton Road, uh, and then go on to Thornton Road to Oak Ridge Road, make a left there, yeah. and again go up to our parking ride lot in the, in the Cobb Connection. And uh, to me, the benefit of, of option B is that you're able to serve that entire link of Thornton Road uh, north of the, the, the expressway. So that covers a lot of territory and a lot of job possibilities for individuals and, and also ridership. So, so again, you, you had, uh, I saw your report that was, you know, before that together in the weekend and I, I was impressed by that. I did not, you know, contrary to opinion, didn't know you were going to do that in the weekend recognizing that you needed to get some experts in really helping with that. So well, thank you for that. Um, but, but that being said, um, so option B meant more riders and jobs, but option A had dealt with the poverty component, it dealt with the different segments. That, did, did, that, did I get that right? Yes, you did. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Yes, you did. And, and frankly, in looking at both of those components, uh, they're both identified needs. Yep. And uh, as with any route, uh, whatever is selected going forward, if, if the decision is to move forward, uh, whatever route is selected will be subject to that level of scrutiny that only a, an actual operator would be able to give it. And so there's definitely going to be the need for and the opportunity for tweaking whichever route to address needs. And, and uh, overcome obstacles. Uh, you know, there, there's a, a, a lot of ways that you could uh, alter that route. For example, you could come up with a plan C if you wanted to, go down a uh, sky view or go to maximum, go up to 78, come back around. That then addresses both of those components. Now, I haven't done any detailed analysis of either have, uh, has Gary or the consultants, but uh, that has an implication to the headwind. How long does it take to go that route? Yes. But is it is it a uh, sort of a composite route that, that uh, addresses both of those issues? It would. Be. Um, and that again, that's what what we've talked about all along. That no matter what routes we choose, there, there's going to be changes in them. There, there's going to be tweaks in them, especially as we bring on our third party operator. Uh, these are, are, are companies that do this for a living. They operate and run buses every day. They know what's going to work and what not, what's not going to work. Uh, if a, if a, they can tell you if uh, a right turn is too sharp for a, a bus to make, too tight for a bus to make, thing, things like that. So we're, we're going to lean heavily on them once they come on board to help us refine these routes to as good as we can possibly get them to begin with. We'll get that, that later, that's what we'll, we'll get to that later, third party operator when they get come that. Let's pause for a minute, Commissioner Mulcair. I know that the Holmes route was something that you've expressed that was of a concern. It's something you know I've always acknowledged it, duly noted, even when you were out of, um, um, mm -hmm. out, um, I've acknowledged. Any thoughts, and again, these are just thoughts, they're not, they moment. Yeah. Uh, it seems like it's a good plausible option to uh, reach that regional 
landscape, you know, hooking up, hooking up with Cobb. Uh, I have been, you know, all along concerned about uh, Douglas County unilaterally going regional, but embedded in that issue is the cost mm -hmm. of, of doing that. And uh, I ran some numbers, and uh, the cost with the six million dollar grant, and uh, including the Holmes Barter route, that that route absorbed forty seven percent of the funding, and it was uh, forty four point six uh, of, of the round trip mileage total uh, for those four routes, and so what I had in, envisioned was if we could remove uh, the Holmes Martyr route, that would distribute more money to the remaining routes, i.e. the Route 10, 20, and 30. Uh, again, I've done some numbers. Uh, I'm not an uh, actuary or a mathematician or anything, but I know how to add and subtract and divide. I've got a good uh, parochial school education. and. Uh, I'm concerned about the numbers being thin, but I don't have enough information to know that that's a fact. So to, to the issue of the, of the uh, option B, it sounds good, but in my mind, it's just it's a reallocation of mileage and the, and the funding to a, in a different direction. And so that leaves me uh, remaining with the issue uh, of it being enough money to, to operate all, all four routes. So I, I like the idea of the connectivity and, and the regionalism without Douglas County going on, going on some, uh, but the money issue remains. But may I respond? Sure, oh, yeah. that? Uh, always. <coughs> our consultant committees who, who put uh, these routes together for us and also the cost estimates, they're, they base their cost estimates on a, an operating per hour cost of $57. And the way they came up with that number is they compared what other agencies in the region, what their hour and operating costs are. And there, there's also <coughs> a, lot of, a lot of other factors uh, that go into determining that cost, like the, the speed of the vehicle, uh, the layover of the vehicle, deadhead miles, a number mm -hmm. of things like that. And in a conversation with our consultant just before I came into this meeting, she she assured me that she built up enough cushion, if you want to call it, in that fifty-seven dollars an hour uh, that we would, we will be covered uh, with enough funds to operate these four routes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, sir. Well, okay. Duly noted. Uh, as far as information. I think we want, to your point, use more plausible or viable options um, it was to just acknowledge. It's always been acknowledged. And, okay, well, we can get there um, if, if, if there was a will there. Um, I won't believe that because I want to get to this third part operator. So, but at the same point, do you guys have a recommendation on which one, though? Where would you lean? So to his point, they're probably equally. I mean, either way, um, you wouldn't miss, per se, but it's, I mean, is there any logistics or operationals that would make this lean one way versus the other? Seeing that they probably could, you know, the population being served would still be well met either way. Well, I'll address it first and then Miguel and Chum. We need to cut you off. No. Okay, we're way in. I mean, no, you're good. Right. My, okay. uh, my preference at this point would be option B because it covers that area of Thornton Road north of the interstate. <laughs> And I agree with that, with that assessment. Uh, it serves a greater population. Uh, having said that, uh, I don't want it uh, lost in the, in, the, in the translation that whatever route we settle on, there's going to be further refinement necessary to, to optimize it. And so I wouldn't want to be constrained to whatever route specifically, a turn here, a turn there is identified on the route because as part of the uh, uh, the approval process, the application process, for funding, we're going to have to go through that exercise in much more detail. And uh, so it, they're subject to change to the extent that we have to meet the criteria that, that is required by the Federal Transit uh, Authority. I see. So, uh, 
again, so let's, let's bring this topic to, to, to sort of a closure that um, based on an affirming position of the Board of Commissioners to Rule 4, uh, which is to accept the grant um, and to follow the FTA, um, a, a, a proposed system with a set of proposed routes we're currently doing. Um, is, it, is it the committee's recommendation to go as is, meaning all the way out to homes, or is it the committee's um, recommendation to go with one of the options that A or B in the sounds like based on you, B, Mark, and you can weigh in. I mean, again, this is just us talking um, to get to a point of choice. Because again, we got we got to make a decision and we got to put something forward. We know that there's public hearings that will come out on the backside of the FTA process that you guys have got to go through. Um, we understand it. I think the intent of introducing your net that was again, the goal didn't know, didn't know it was going to turn out this way, Commissioner Moak here, but it, it does. That, um, that we, we do have an option. So um, I, 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 I would be remiss if I didn't say, hey, we can change this now. Your call, would you like to, for us to, to alter that route um, as a consideration? Or what do you think? Well, I'm going to reserve, you know, final judgment uh, to our full board. Yeah. But, okay. but, but I, I think of, of, the, of the options uh, presented, the, the regionalization through uh, uh, option B would certainly be preferable. Do we know that one of the reservations? Okay. Yeah, I agree. And a result of the meet McCobb, I mean, I think that's a no-brainer. Okay. Instead of the AG Holmes route, it should be either A or B, and, you know, I'll refer to staff on that, because it's, it's going to change anyway yeah. at some point. But, you know, Cobb's already going to AG Holmes. So we should use their system. Okay. Okay. Can we be establish a baseline recommendation? Mike, we'll frame it to make sure you can do your comment that B is the recommendation <coughs> from the committee. Yes? Yes, yes. That we're going to alter as part of this acceptance and filing with the FTA on uh, a new fourth route, route what, 30? We're going to call it 40. Okay, fine, fine. Th thank you. Route 40, thank you. Subject to approval by the full board. Full board here. Correct. Okay. You can change the words in a minute if you need to clarify, but are you okay with that? I'm fine. Okay. <coughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Aye. Okay, we'll talk about, uh, let's back up for a minute. We've got our uh, colleague here. Come on up, please. Um, and Gary, you go ahead. This is Danielle Crow from the Come on, collaborative on. firm. Uh, she did most of the work in our rebranding effort in our public outreach uh, campaign. And as I mentioned yesterday, uh, I think they did a, a great job. They were very professional, treated all the citizens who came to the meetings with, with respect, uh, paid a lot of attention to detail put a lot of thought into everything that they did. And, and again, they weren't afraid to point us in another direction if they thought we were doing something the wrong way. Uh, got a lot of good information out of their work and I'm gonna let Danielle talk about what they did and, and where we go from here. Okay, let me, let me make it important. And I, I do wanna acknowledge yesterday's meeting in, in Commissioner Mulk here. Uh, I, I, I want to acknowledge that, guys, I really believe it, it was not intentional, but the full board should have got you guys the information ahead of time. Like, you, you know our, our rule is that we're going to make a decision. you got to have everything there. So I want to apologize to you. And again, we're part of the same committee, but we, we needed to have that information. There was no slight on our consultant um, um, by way of, of this report because what we, what we didn't want was the optics, and that was not the intent, that the public's input didn't matter that we just went through two months of an exercise and that their, 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 their input did not matter no matter what it was. So I want to acknowledge that because I'm sitting there in the meeting, I'm talking about how great this report is. And the only reason I got it because I just happened to be, I hijacked y'all meeting on the, on the 6th to get a couple, you know, I was happy to be there, listen to you guys. I said, oh, let me, let me, you know, it was a draft, but I still got it. But I don't want you guys to feel though you didn't deliver that um, 
I think that's important for the record. I thought you did a phenomenal job. This report is actually pretty good. Um, we, we did, in, in Commissioner Moe here, to this point, one of the directions we did give them was not to get into interpretation. Mm -hmm. In other words, we wanted to be very clinical. I was testing. It, it, oh, yeah, you leaned in. I, she handled it. She, she was very graceful and under fire. We appreciate that. But at the same point, um, we, we know how this works. So thank you for that. So I'm going to yield back. Go ahead. Take us to it. Yeah, uh, Mr. Yes. Chairman, yes, uh, I observed a meeting in my, in my district, and I just uh, would, would uh, uh, reprise what you said. Uh, the, uh, the whole staff that was there taking, taking input, yes. uh, taking heat, taking questions, taking inquiries, taking information, uh, did a very good job. So thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, good afternoon. Um, if I may, I guess I just need to know where we are with the agenda. We actually received a call from the office stating that we should not be here today. Mm -hmm. So it's okay. You're here. I'm here now. Okay. Um, well, it was two parts, and, and Gary, we'll just reframe it. One was just to get. We, we don't have to rehash what you rehash yesterday. You may say tonight in case my, my colleagues have some questions, which they're, they're allowed to bring work doing uh, moments like this. But I'm going to say, Commissioner Molker, do you have any questions for her that you prefer to defer or not defer? Because there's a body of work that we want to talk about next step. So, no, I, I did. Uh, I did read read report, and, and, and a lot of it was uh, was familiar. Uh, and so, no, I don't have any questions. Okay. So you don't have to rehash that. So Gary, so assuming, again, we move forward, uh, one, of the, one of the outputs that you guys can tell me was, uh, now I made the comment, you know, we, we probably, as an administration, haven't done a good job of communicating to the public, and that was the whole thing we recognized, right, and that was a confirmation, and so, and we know that a formal communication plan is needed beyond just getting this input, but communicating ongoing, how do we, how, and I'm, the wrong word is, is not marketing, because marketing is not appropriate for the government. But guys, give me the right word. But some kind of way, we've got to communicate to the public on all activities um, that are going on in both implementing this and ongoing operations. That is not our expertise. No more is it you guys' expertise in running a bus system, which is why we got a third party operator. In other words, there's something about the budget and everything like, well, y'all don't have, that's not your skill set. Right? That's why you hire experts to come in and there's certain functions that you outsource and you only can take it so far and that any fleshing out any further and, and I want to acknowledge um, staff, there's, there's only so much detail y'all can give. Anything else, y'all just winging it. It's like, guys, you, you can't go below any further. The third party operator will come on board, they'll sit down and lay out all the details, all the full operating budgets, all the full annual everything. Likewise, bringing on a communication expert, we don't have that either. That's that's not we're not in that business. So, let's talk about how um, what you're intending with this next line item on the agenda for um, next steps for communication. Well, we found out a lot of uh, valuable information in the initial phase of our our public outreach, uh, as has been stated. Uh, we we just uh, reiterated the our thought that we don't communicate well with the public on what our services are and what we in, intend to do. Um, so many people in the community still don't know that, that we exist. And so in our first phase and discussions about what we might do moving forward, uh, we've come up with a, a plan and some, some specific things that we can, can do and that's where uh, Danielle and her group uh, would come in, and I think that's what you want to address today, correct? I can share some things. All sure. right. One thing, and Commissioner Walker, and this, this came up in yesterday's meeting, Mark, I just want to make sure we acknowledge it. One of our colleagues did um, hold us accountable about it, um, and it was more of a, but I asked for an additional meeting. Right? And, and we, we know that the scope of work was limited to a certain time frame and a certain dollar amount, right? right. But we acknowledge the fact that, you know, we can do an additional meeting. So that's on, you know, us as a committee, Commissioner Mulcair. And this is, this, you, you might have heard it, but I just wanted to make sure that it, because uh, it was reemphasized. And it's not that we didn't acknowledge it. It's just that, okay, we're going to have to, that, that's additional work. Mm -hmm. And that's something that um, I just wasn't willing, willing to do at that time. It's like, well, duly noted, we agreed by contract each commission district should have a meeting at a minimum. We fulfilled perfectly. And it's a 
Yes, it's sir. important to note that we coordinated with um, Ms. Sherry Mathis, as directed, who um, I think serves each of the commissioners, and each of the commissioners selected their location. Yeah. And it, which is great. We, it, we it, did it, not. And it's okay. It, it just, um, it, one more time, we, we recognized Mirror Lake, I, I have it for the record, uh, was an important um, area. So uh, would you be opposed to us at least considering, again, I wouldn't just do it though, but just that one. I would say, okay, one more time, do all four commission districts. In other words, fine. I mean, so it needs to be equally distributed that says, okay, if we do another round uh, for, for this new, if we move forward, you would put that in there. Does that make sense? In other words, mm -hmm. Commission Mobile Care, make it part of the multilateral and, and uh, right. uh, I, I think uh, Commissioner Guyer's point, you know, is well taken. I, I don't want, I don't know why she didn't choose uh, that venue wasn't directed to begin with. Yeah. But uh, had you know, having said that, uh, for the citizens, it's an, uh, apparently and obviously a need, uh, and they uh, we need to reach out to those people uh, in Mirror Lake at the same time. Uh, I think we'd be remiss if we didn't uh, give an equal opportunity to the other three districts to schedule another meeting. Uh, and so, I would be in favor of that. Mark, you got that just for the record? You guys okay as a part of the scope of work that we move forward that we'll add that one more round in there? Yes, so definitely. I don't want to take you off task on what you're about to say, but I wanted to, I had to acknowledge that to the side before I come <coughs> in. No, the only thing I would, I would add to that would be uh, if at some point on the horizon we feel like there's there's going to be a change in direction or additional information or or, or deletions or modifications or whatever, then perhaps the second meeting would, would wait after that. It, it, just a thought. Uh, I don't know how appropriate. But, uh, rather than just uh, say come to another meeting in, in, in the third district and have the exact same information and presentation as in the first meeting. Just food for thought. I said, whatever is best determined, I'm, I'm fine with. Well, the next round will, will be more specific toward uh, what we're going to do moving forward, if that's the decision. I understand. Well. Not a rehash, but just be understand. All right. Okay. Go ahead. Um, I, I guess our recommendation would be in terms of the continuation. While we were working on this initial campaign, we did a full assessment. Um, on sh um, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats um, as it relates to communicating to the larger public um, the scope of services that currently exist. So irrespective if a route was rolled out, services that currently exist as ride share. Um, and during that assessment, um, Gary's team manages and operates the services. There's not necessarily someone dedicated to our that skill set isn't necessarily there by their own acknowledgement in terms of marketing those things. So that was outlined in the report that we provided. Um, in addition, some next steps in the communication plan that was developed during that time. Those things are there and they are waiting to be fully launched. So once the brand is formally approved that we created, it needs to be rolled out. Uh, it wasn't a matter of um, just delivering it to the committee or the board, but actually unifying everything that has to go under it, um, as well as the social media. Those things were established, but until we receive authority to roll them out, you won't feel the effects of establishing them. So those recommendations exist. Um, I think additionally, if we were to continue in support I think there's also another process. I'm sure um, someone will stop me if I'm misspeaking. But um, with the grant, there are also public hearings that have to happen. And so that's additional public input that would be required in addition to the round of meetings that we've just discussed. Um, so more importantly, I thought during my assessment, again, this is my professional recommendation, that there are opportunities to build upon the services that are currently in place, especially with the business community in terms of the, the smart commute van pool. Um, and according to Gary and Miguel, the department and the county already has the capacity to grow those programs in, in that they have the vans. Um, I think there are opportunities to fill up the routes that are already there, as well as establish intra-county routes. 
to service the businesses and the citizens here in Douglas County. Can you talk a little bit about maybe some of the specific things that we were thinking about moving forward? Sure. So um, some of those things would, first off, um, in terms of developing those partnerships, is to um, work a little bit more with the chamber. I did some initial meetings, but the chamber and the um, Economic Development Authority, because what we did, I did have an initial meeting. There are some businesses uh, in certain areas, large employers, where I think there was a study through United Way where we, the county identified some transit dependent people who were in need of jobs, who there could be a match, but some of these employers are going outside of the county to secure reliable um, staff. So I think there's an opportunity for a win-win that we could help the citizens here in Douglas County and the businesses who are here. Um, so there was some specific outreach that needs to happen, but there are also collateral materials that need to be developed. So it's more about establishing partnerships. Um, so with those companies, either the HR directors, uh, benefits coordinators, because this is a benefit. They have um, less need for parking if they use the smart commute van pools. Um, the employees save money in terms of their commute, and then they don't have the stress of driving. But ultimately, the county doesn't spend any additional money because these are the vans that we already have. Um, so we're optimizing our current fleet to a certain extent. Utilization. I know I'm talking about in terms of original yep. as far as you know. But all right, and I, I think you're you're onto something. I, I I don't think we're. I think in this meeting, I want to acknowledge the public hearings. I think you guys did a great job. It's something about having neutrality in, in certain things that you know. I, I think maybe just in this topic. Uh, I chose not to go to mine, um, just to not to politicize it um, uh, by, uh, and, you know, um, by activism, uh, because again, it, it's something that the, the public needs to be heard, you know, independently. People don't want to, they want a chance to sort of weigh in without being bullied or, or, or being dominated by the, by the moment. Like, it's my neighbor, like, okay, can I at least vote, right? Can I say something? So I, I think we have to be sensitive, and I think having um, a firm like U.S. Third Party Operator <coughs> takes some of that out. Um, next, I want to make sure we, we cover, so Gary, because we got to keep this going. We've kind of run out of time here. Gary, is this something that we can craft? Because there's two parts. There's, if the bus system didn't go forward, that's one part. But there's still the, the broader need of communications in general, because that's what the grant was for to begin with, which, in other words, our existing services, people right. don't know. And Cobb said the same thing, like, we're terrible at this. We, so we, we, we all, you guys were in the room, you can confirm that it was acknowledged. So can we at least frame it that way to have um, a, 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 a scope of work that has existing, if this, and then if we want to expand it, we could do that. I mean, I don't know what the timing of this is, but. And the next topic is related because this is related also to the third party operator. I mean, in other words, they don't do marketing, they don't do communication, they're straight operational logistics people. So there's still the need, but how are y'all thinking of syncing this together? Mark, I need you to make sure y'all got to tie this together. Well, sure, well, we could absolutely do that. Basically, again, come up with option A and option B, where option A is we concentrate. If, if we don't move forward with the bus service, option A would be that we concentrate on their, our existing services, try to maximize them. Option B would be our, our existing services and the bus service and whatever else we move for, forward with. Can you craft something and have it just have propose when you propose something? I mean, is that what your intent was? I mean, I'm, I'm looking at Gary. Yes, sir. Is that what the intent? But Miguel or y'all? This would that's yeah, that would yeah. be the right. We, we would take uh, and even with option B, there's there's two components to that because there's the issue of uh, the additional effort that would be required as part of a hearing for for the, for the transit uh, application. Uh, transit funding application. So, so I don't see it as a as an A and a B. I see it as a as an A, a B, and a C. Actually, I'll let y'all work that out. I got to go. I, I, I'm, I'm I'm okay with that. Mark, are you okay? Mm -hmm. So you can you over you know, the next couple of weeks? I know we got a retreat that you got to focus on right now, but you get you know, and we got another um, legislative meeting at the beginning of August. But can you work that out. Mm -hmm. 
Sure. And then it, I think Danielle's being a little shy. We we can put that together. They can yeah. put that together. Yeah, we have um, yeah. ideas and, and things that we. You have the elements here. But well, you, yeah. It, but it's it, first things first. You can't. You, 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 you guys handle it right. You're steady. You, you just you're fine. Can you grab something for us though? Mm -hmm. Miguel, you okay? Mm -hmm. I just keep this moving. Third party operator. Okay, well, in connection with with the uh, moving forward at option yep. for the bus system, we would, uh, as we have already started uh, exploring the possibility of a third party operator, they came in, uh, we, uh, the county uh, floated a, a request for qualifications, we narrowed the field, we had some, uh, some of the firms come in and do presentations as to how they would approach uh, this service, uh, we narrowed the field and selected a, a firm. They have been sort of uh, in uh, idle mode yep. until we make a decision to move forward, and they they are the ones that are going to be refining uh, the the costing of the operation in terms of uh, the route. Uh, they're going to be they would be looking at the stops uh, that that have been proposed. Uh, whether they uh, need to be right at this corner or the corner prior to that because of whatever constraints. So they're going to be refining uh, the operation as has as been identified, costing that out, and that is going to be what we would utilize moving forward in terms of uh, uh, the FDA application uh, and, and the like. So uh, where we are now is if we decide to, if the board decides to move forward, we would have to also engage uh, that consultant to begin the process of finalizing, tweaking the routes, tweaking the numbers, and that would go to our staff application. And they, that has to be done relatively quickly uh, so that uh, we'd be in position to file that application when the funding is actually uh, received by the FDA. Next over. What's the final one? All right, got it. All right. Fair enough. So, again, I, I want to acknowledge that, um, yes, you're right. You did pull the RFQ. You guys, um, I think you all made a recommendation facilitated by Bill Peacock for all to do that. Mm -hmm. The day that y'all had that presentation, I was having eye surgery and I missed it. But um, to Commissioner Gold, uh, Kara's uh, encouragement, I did meet with the third party operator, double back, and had my chance to ask questions. Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. So of the record, I did um, probably about half an hour, you know, but I was able to, you know, by myself, just go all in and ask a lot of questions. Clarify. We were, I think you were listening to the meeting, or or you saw, you I saw, saw the video, video but yeah. you, you encouraged like talk to them, you yeah. know, because you didn't get your, you know, again, I have a different um, mindset, and logic line, so mm -hmm. yeah, I'm glad I did, and I, I think I agree with you guys. So, Mark, you still got that. Whenever you, you know, I'll sign off. But I don't know where that. I don't have it, but. Um, you, you guys had y'all already signed it, signed your, your document, or no? No, it, it's we're, we're awaiting authorization to move towards that process. We have not started. Yeah. So uh, what's happened? The evaluation team has gone through the RFPs or okay, the RFPs. Okay. Yep. They have recommended a the third party operator. And then we're at the point where we need to negotiate the price because there was no price included. All right. So then bring that back to the transportation committee and ultimately take it to the board for approval. Okay. Commissioner okay. Boker, that's what you yeah. mm -hmm. I'm fine. So do we need to make a motion? Do we need to make a So we want to give administrative concurrence for y'all to go do that? How do y'all want to do this? <coughs> uh, I would say um, keep it on up and up. Let's, let's vote. Okay. Hold on. And I'll, I'll make a motion that we be authorized to uh, negotiate with uh, Commute Solutions and Justin Rising to be the third party operator of our uh, proposed bus service. So on that, we will send that to the full board of commissioners at what point? I'll just play out. And, and after the vote, I would say the next, if the, if the vote is affirmative, then on the grant. On the grant. On the grant. Either the Meet one of the first next two meetings. Yeah, we need to put it on. If the grant's on the next agenda, which would be August sixth and seventh, we can put it on further down the line. 
on the agenda, yeah, yeah, yeah. or we could uh, push it back to the second meeting at all. So I, I would prefer to push it back to that second meeting, and I have have them on the same. So then, actually, what we have is a recommendation to the board of commissioners to negotiate with the third party operators. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And they will outsource it back to Bill, and you will put it on again, right? All right, so um, I make a motion that we put forth a recommendation for what's it called? Commute Solutions mm -hmm. uh, to be our third party operator. I um, make recommendation to the full board of commissioners to commence negotiations. Yes. Second. All in favor? Uh, Any opposed? Unanimous. Mm -hmm. All right. What else we got? Who's second in that? Uh, Gary. I, I motion. All right, come on, Miguel. Let's keep going. Anything else? Uh, not on that subject. Uh, I think uh, we've got that on down. But uh, I, I do have some uh, updates on projects. Uh, the next on the agenda would be the Highway 5 northbound uh, intersection improvements, uh, right turn lane at Douglas Boulevard. Uh, we had had discussions at the last meeting, and uh, what I have done, I think you took it under advisement uh, to give it further thought <coughs> and, and uh, discussion, consideration. I, I put together a, uh, an estimate of my best guess at this point as to what the cost would be for that project, and this is this is a guesstimate in the sense that it's, uh, it's obviously we haven't we haven't engaged any consultants to to give us uh, a proposal. So um, based on the cost of other work that we have done in the past, uh, looking at the two options, if that project were to move forward with SPLOS funding or if we were going to try and engage uh, an application for federal funding and uh, what that what impact that would have on the timeline for delivery of that project uh, as i mentioned at the last meeting my best estimate of the cost of the project would be about uh, seven hundred fifty thousand dollars if it's handled internally or locally through, with SPLOS funds there could be additional cost based on the utilities, how complex that one uh, pole communications lines that are attached to the pole and the electrical services, but it's in that order of magnitude, uh, th three quarters of a million. Now, if we move forward with local funding, then we could uh, go out for a design consultant to uh, draw up the plans. Uh, between the end of this year uh, and and starting next year, and then they would be designing the project. It would probably be a six to seven month design period, and we would be in position to begin a right of way acquisition towards the end of next year and construction to follow the following year. Uh, so we're looking at uh, two and a half year period, more or less to do that project with all local funding at a cost of about three quarters of a million. If we uh, wanted to pursue uh, federal funding, my, my expectation would be that because of the federal criteria that must be followed in terms of the presentation of the plans, the review process, the additional requirements, it would add probably another half a million dollars to the cost. And, uh, would the cost would then go to 1.25 million now if we could have an application considered for federal funding and, it, and if it were approved the maximum contribution back would be 80 percent 80 percent is again a, an ambitious uh, uh, return rate or, or contribution that would be the max more often it is something less than an 80-20 split. Yep. Uh, so uh, potentially we could end up with a contribution as high as, as uh, a million, but it could be as low as half a million again. And, uh, and the cost would be 1.25. So potentially there may not be a lot of savings to the county. Uh, there could be, but there may not be necessarily. And the timeline for construction, we would be looking at uh, 
a 2020 uh, start for design. The reason being that uh, for federal funding, you, you can't apply just at any time. You have to wait for a call for projects by the Metropolitan Planning Organization, which in this area of the metro region is the Atlanta Regional Commission. They have indicated that uh, sometime next year, they're going to be looking at, uh, at starting the process. Uh, the last time they started that process took every bit of a year to finalize it. So if it starts in 2019 with the application, it, it won't be finalized until 2020. That's when you would start the design process, uh, get a consultant, get the design underway. Then comes the typical timeline for a project of this nature, and that is you, they, they allocate a certain amount of time for the design, and then once the design is completed, they allocate a certain amount of time for the right-of-way acquisition. So it, it, be, it becomes a serial operation rather than a concurrent. Which is what the southbound turn lanes are in. Right? That is correct. That's why it's been going on that for is correct. two, three years. Exactly. They, they will not allow us to proceed to the next phase of the project until we fully complete meet the criteria on the previous phase. So that would yield a uh, construction timeline of 2023. Now, it could potentially save the county uh, half a million dollars, at most. But it would delay the project by three years, and uh, the savings may be substantially less than that. So what I need from, from the committee is a recommendation uh, to either uh, stay with full local funding through SWAT, or... Which is what more amount of really recommends which is the size of the project. Right. And, uh, or, or seek your federal funds. Uh, again, if, if it's done with local funding, then we can proceed to uh, do things uh, uh, in, not in series, but mm -hmm. currently. Okay, I, I got it. And so, to your point, let's, let's take Moreland to the side for a minute. Um, just, you know, I, I get perhaps um, the vote of um, Commissioner Walker take the lead on this. What, what, what do you think? What are your thoughts? Well, I think uh, the uh, problem is chronic at that, at that intersection. Uh, and uh, needs to be addressed in a more timely manner than, than waiting uh, the difference b between uh, you know three years and five years uh, typically. And uh, I don't think uh, the citizens would have any qualms about that either, accelerating the project uh, as opposed to uh, trying to garner some money unknown amounts from the federal government. Uh, so I would proceed with, with the local funding would be my opinion. So the local funding would come through SPLOS? Yeah. And it is on the list. It's a current project for this year on the list. Is it below the line or above the line? It's above the line. It's 2018 project. So it's just a matter of authorizing you to move forward. Is that what I'm hearing? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm fine. Okay. I'll make a motion we proceed with the North Carolina right turn lane project on Highway 5 at Douglas Boulevard um, with local funding, which is SPLOS funding. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any nays? Aye. Next. Okay, next item on the agenda. These are uh, essentially project updates. Uh, the uh, Whitestone culvert. Oh, is, is there any more action items that we need to take no, out of the committee? No, not on the agenda uh, as currently constituted. Okay, there was one, let me bring this back up. And I think I mentioned this in the work session about the need for Maxim Road. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Yes. So, Maxim Road is a project that was, it was actually brought up in March, as you know, during our uh, meeting with COP. They had also concerns about that, you know, that, that intersection of interest on where we are, and I know you've got a right away of so the guys did, didn't it? Uh, uh, yes, yes, and and essentially, uh, it, we we do have a project. We're in the process of finalizing the, the details. Uh, we had a, a final field plan review 
uh, there's probably about a dozen folks from the DOT and, and us out there walking the project. Uh, so we're getting very, very close to wrapping that up for, for construction, for bidding for, for construction. Uh, however, that's going to leave us uh, short. There'll be improvements from Thornton Road up a, uh, along Maxim Road uh, a distance, and it, get, it gets us fairly close to the Cobb County uh, boundary there, and, and uh, there, there is a gap in the sidewalk, and that's what this project is intended to, to remedy, to, to, to have a continuous uh, connection. So uh, as we're wrapping up the design of one project, uh, it would be an opportune time to, to engage in, um, in that other exercise so that uh, once we get under construction with the one, we'll be in position to extend the sidewalk and make it continuous. In general. There is There's something to that point, something that you know, we've acknowledged uh, when we brought highlights this is that we know that there was um, um, pedestrian to vehicle death there. This is one of the most dangerous intersections in the metro area, um, Max and Thorpe. So we recognize it. It's something that we all follow, but um, it is on the list at the bottom, but I'd like to, uh, in this committee, bring a recommendation to move it up and make it align <coughs> with uh, the current project that's in play. Not ahead of it, but make sure that while we're in there, you know, while they're in there having surgery, let's go ahead and clean it all up. Mr. Walker, any objections? Safety wise? No, it's hard to argue for safety. Uh, when we when we added it uh, uh, to the bottom of the list, there was some discussion about it being moved up uh, yes or nay, yay or, yay or nay. Uh, but the fact that there's a concurrent project and it's clearly a, a public safety issue, uh, I can't make a good case not to support it. Yeah, I'm sorry, uh, but is it just the sidewalks? Is that what we're looking at moving up? Yes, it would be the sidewalk. You know, because the sidewalk portion of the splash is, you know, where that budget is looking good simply because of the Post Road Bridge was included in that category. And it's, you know, Douglas County, I mean, uh, Georgia DOT is now funding that project. Okay. You see. And that project was two and a half to three million dollars mm -hmm. that we don't have to spend. Okay. Eight million dollars, I think, allocated in that uh, category, and then we don't know exactly what those existing sidewalk products are going to come in. And I think that this is the category where, where there there were some sidewalks that were identified specifically. Those mm -hmm. projects, those three that, projects, the three projects are, are under design. And there's other sidewalks that that could be added, need need to be done at some point, and I think this would fall in that category, that the next design project for sidewalks would be that. I think that's, mm -hmm. that's the way I understood it. You good? Plus the safety issue. Yeah. Okay. Make a motion to yes. it up okay. and make it fit with the, we'll, we'll get the right language for you. I'd like to make a motion to move up the sidewalk project for maximum road up on the list and make it align with the current um, Max Road, Thornton Road intersection project, sidewalk only. That here? Say it right. Second. All in favor? Any right. objections? All right, thank you. All right, so just give us a quick update. We're going to fly through this and get everybody okay. back where they got to go. Absolutely. Uh, Whitestone Culvert, the design, uh, the, the plans have been um, reworked. Uh, there was a design that was reviewed by, uh, by WSA and there were changes that were recommended by them. The, the redesign has been done. It is now in our hands. They're reviewing it. We're reviewing it. The expectation is that, that in the uh, very near future uh, we'll have that ready for advertising for construction. Now before we do that, we would have to do the, the right-of-way acquisition. Uh, we've identified uh, some right-of-way that's needed for the project and some easements as well. Um, uh, it just so happens that all of the area is uh, under the control of, a, of the same a uh, entity, and that is uh, who I believe to have been the developer initially. So I think we'll be in position to move forward and approach them about, about the right-of-way uh, so we can get that. Uh, 
on the on the our control, so we can move the project forward. Okay. Commissioner Volker, your help is you know this project's been going on for a while. There's some things you know you just check out on. Can you? I mean, <laughs> what? what well, it went to the own, actual ownership of the, of the road, the road service, and all that, and the fact that he, you know, he, he acquired the property pennies on the dollar. But uh, the citizen outrage, which I understand, have, having a bridge out, uh, pressed us into making a uh, uh, a solution, literally making a solution to get to get this bridge open. I can't foresee uh, the developer uh, being any. Uh, in any way obstructive to uh, the right of way acquisition uh, because it's going to make the property more marketable and more, more accessible. Town on all four corners? <clears throat> yeah. He's, he's, he's going to be all for it. If, he he's, be. if he's not, he's crazy. Mm -hmm. And if he tries to hold us up, he won't do it. And yeah, we'll hold him up. Right. <clears throat> and it was this is this report, right? Yeah. And, and it was something that's always been, it's been a long time um, in coming, so I just wanted to. Hopefully we can get through this in the next what a couple of years. Uh, no, uh, a lot sooner than that. Yeah. All right, All right keep going. All right. Okay, the next project, uh, uh, and we talked a little bit about this. The the, uh, the next step on that project is uh, if we're going to handle it in, uh, ourselves uh, in terms of uh, local funding, then we would uh, we would like a. Uh, a recommendation that uh, that we or a administrative concurrence that we also while we are procuring the design consultant to to draw up the plans that we be uh, authorized to pursue the right of way acquisition as well. You got to do it. Okay. Yeah. That's just administrative concurrence. Yeah. Okay. Um, the next project is the John West at Brightstart Road intersection improvements. Uh, that the design has been completed, uh, essentially completed, and we're now uh, ready to move to right of way acquisition. Again, um, this would be an administrative concurrence. It's all being handled with as plus local funding, um, so we would be ready to begin that process uh, or continue that process. Uh, with your concurrence. Project already on the list, we're already in play, we're just looking for um, coverage for the committee just to keep open. Yeah. That's the key. Mr. Yeah. Okay. Granted. Thank you. The next project is the I-20 Chapel Hill Road uh, Divergent Diamond Interchange Study. Uh, that is a, uh, a project with federal funding um, that uh, is looking uh, at potentially a solution for the congestion situation there at the bridge and uh, the, with, the, with the two traffic signals uh, with intersections of very close proximity. Um, there isn't uh, a lot more that can be done by way of timing the signals to get traffic through, just the configuration of mm -hmm. the interchange is, is uh, the obstruction. And so uh, we have uh, gone out with a request for qualifications. We're in the process of now uh, finalizing uh, that process and we will be coming back to the to the board with a recommendation once we identify the consultant uh, that we recommend yeah. based on that process. So so for, for purposes of the committee at this point, there is no action that we're asking for. It's just uh, so you'd be on the alert because fairly soon uh, we'll be coming to you for a recommendation to actually begin negotiations. And let, let, let me make a, a comment on this. Now, this diamond interchange, Commissioner Wilker, mm. he's really <laughs> in on this. Um, this is something that um, you know, um, they probably predates near you around, but it, it, uh, the other two colleagues here uh, were not here. I was here. You were here. <laughs> I'm not here. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, you were here. Um, no, but yeah. But uh, this is important to say um, because we've been here before. Um, as of going down this path with this diamond interchange in Chapel Hill and Commissioner Melker for way in. And at that time, it was a county city. I think we were trying to take the lead some kind of way. It got off. What, or do we see the same obstacle again happening? Are we having any conversation with the city? Or is this one of the ones where we, uh, um, we agreed to take over Chapel Hill? I need some clarity on what this really well, means. Well, that, that is a difference in, in the last uh, uh, 
uh, services contract uh, SDS. SDM that we entered into. Uh, we took over uh, Chapel Hill Road. Mm -hmm. uh, prior to that, uh, Chapel Hill got Camelton Street was was under the, the city DOT the administration management and uh, was the previous mayor of the previous mayor. Uh, yeah. Kind of had had issues about the interaction, even though the city was putting no money in it. Right. Uh, the county was putting all the money in it, doing all the work, doing all the lifting, but they somehow took offense, and uh, the project went uh, went down the tubes. So I don't know how much the design work would be needed. It seemed to me like it was already done before, but uh, my recollection was. Uh, Maybe fuzzy on that point. No, Commissioner, but what... Uh, it was a funding line up, I think, what it was. That, that is a possibility. That there, yeah. was, there was a federal project that had identified funding for future faces, but the, the work that was done at the time, I wasn't here at the time, but the work that I've been able to find that was accomplished was at the concept level. It, okay. it was yeah. initially to That's look right. at you know, some, some concept layouts. Now, the volumes... Uh, and I've, I've looked at that study, the volumes that they identified at, at that time, uh, the current volumes are much higher. So, so sure. it, yeah. would not, it would not uh, surprise me uh, that uh, a configuration of the ramps and, and the, uh, the DDI itself and the expanse of it uh, would be different. Uh, uh, might be latent, you think? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Right. So, so that's duly really noted. I, I just wanted for the record that we don't have any um, obstacles or yeah, it's, just, no. it's material enough that, that people want. To, well, we have a, we have a say, and we want to wait. And like, okay, guys, let's not let's not repeat this. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. close close cooperation with the yeah. city. I know uh, you got, you guys are handling it while we're in that intersection. A little uh, pet project of mine: the exit ramp off of I twenty um, westbound at uh, Camelton Street. The, the DOT has got a yield sign there, yeah. and uh, the off-ramp, the yield sign, and people automatically think, that, well, okay, let's pull on out here, there's an acceleration lane, there's not. There's an acceleration lane that's maybe one car length, and I've seen more near misses, including myself there, because there's not a stop sign. There's no acceleration lane there for people to come off the ramp, there needs to be a stop sign. Could we check on that? We have, uh, and in fact, uh, the DMT is well aware of that. Uh, we'll remind them again. Okay. But uh, well, typically, the the control that the control that you want out there wants to be generally under their criteria, DOT and the federal criteria, the least disruptive or the the, the least uh, uh, yeah the least disruptive to traffic flow. Taken into account, okay. safety. Mm -hmm. And so it, it's a it's a tough call there. If you had a longer merge lane or, or a weaving lane, as they refer to it, then it wouldn't be as problematic. That's right. But that is an issue. Uh, as a consolation, commissioner, uh, this study will look at that. I need, uh, I need I need consolation. <laughs> it will. It, that will be part of the analysis that this uh, study will. Okay. Well, I've, I've had I've had complaints plus my own uh, registered and, and then also the. The turn lane markings on the hospital drive going up north down Camel Street. The, the turn markings need to be closer to the intersection. But uh, I think this uh, DDI project is going to be uh, so distant in the future. Uh, we can talk to the city and see about you know, see about getting some markings down on Camel Street. Understood. And, and uh, the the project itself, the delivery, will be distant in the future. But the analysis and the findings and recommendations will be more immediate. That that can be leveraged towards. Okay. Good. All right. All right, thank you. I didn't mean to hold you up. Okay, then the last item uh, is the Lee Road Extension uh, Study. Again, another just an update on that. Uh, we have also uh, done a request for qualifications, are in the process of finalizing, selecting the consultant, and we'll be coming back to you fairly soon with, uh, with a uh, request to engage in negotiations to set a price for that. For that. Service. And this is for the extension, correct. which is separate than the widening. Which that is correct. Is this would be the extension south of Route 92. I see. So, uh, just for the record, we, we, we got to at least put it in committee. This whole widening, again, for the record, um, that we believe, what is your belief that this is going to be a viable 
project. We acknowledge that the Douglas County, Douglasville Water Sewer Authority has done work, they recently published, they've done work on um, down there by Sweetwater, on the other side of the bridge right there. And, and there's a, in other words, there's an investment in infrastructure that's already in play. Um, we put a lot of money into right-of-way acquisition and um, everything else along Lee Road uh, regarding um, the widening. The public's expectations, since this came online, and uh, this is something um, just this past Thursday, I get a call from the barbers, because the citizens in that immediate area are like, Commissioner Robinson, y'all gonna fix the potholes? I mean, I mean where are we gonna be with the resurfacing? And it's, they, 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 they thinking that we've abandoned the widening, they're like, well, can you at least resurface the road? I think, I, I just for the record, I, I, um, I need greater assurance, almost like Commissioner Moore here, by the time we get to the budgeting process for 2018 with the SPLOS at NIG, Lee Road will be part of that to resurface because again, we're five, six years in on one side and we're maybe another five, six years. And, and I, you, you can't play the public like, okay, well, we'll get around, we're working through this. I mean, they need to get a yield on their tax dollars and that's one of the major arteries, which a high traffic volume, only second to Thornton Road and Fairman Road, um, that cut through, that we can do better. And so, um, yes, it has a trade-off if we resurface now, um, and then we still want to widen. But this is where we, as the government, um, and it's not talking, but we, as the government, let the public down when we, we we allow things to get away. Right? We didn't properly do project management that allows us to keep up with the, the grant and, and the perishability and stuff, and then it gets sprung on us. And this time last year, so it's not you, you know that. But for the record. Um, can you say what you said the other day to me about uh, just Mr. Mm -hmm. Mulk here? Where are we at with this? And, you know, again, I'll make that decision when it's time for all this to weigh in on our districts on what gets resurfaced, but can you weigh in, please? Uh, absolutely. Essentially, I've spent quite a bit of, uh, of time and effort in, in trying to get to the bottom of where we are from the fiscal standpoint as it relates to that project, and it's been a very convoluted route. However, uh, more recently, it has become uh, a little clearer that the project uh, is much more viable than, than it was a year ago. We're not quite there yet in terms of having all the funding lined up and everybody uh, recognizing it might take some, some additional uh, perhaps agreements and, and, uh, uh, to, to get us there, but it looks like all of the entities, the agencies, the players are uh, becoming much more aligned. So I, I would uh, certainly uh, consider this a, a viable project moving forward. Uh, that does not discount the fact that, that uh, there are a lot of issues uh, with the existing pavement and perhaps that needs to be addressed. Um, we certainly uh, would be sensitive to the possibility that in trying to work through all the agreements that we need to, to line up the funding and move the project forward, that there might be additional delay and, and therefore the, the need for more immediate uh, uh, results out there. Operational yeah. coverage. Okay. Absolutely. Okay, so Commissioner Walker, well, again, this was yours when I first came to Office 09, this whole our outer arc, this whole cut through from mm -hmm. the Boulevard, ultimately over to Chapel Hill, and on around, mm -hmm. um, as you as you Southern arc, yeah. The Southern arc. I, I guess, again, you've got it was Lee Road Bridge, then the widening, then going to 78, now the extension. These are like major phases. And so you got the bridge done, and now we've got an initiative for extension that's moving faster than the park to get there, right? And so that's where I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, can we align this back up? And, and here's my other concern is that there was, uh, just like the cost of inflation for anything, there's, there's an inflationary effect. Is real okay, Mr. Especially now. Go yeah. on, cost us. Oh yeah, especially now. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if it's up thirty percent. Right. Right. And, and so again, so now it's <coughs> we come down to appropriation and trade offs and priorities and so forth. And we know how important this is, but still, we don't even have that number. And it's like, okay, this ain't gonna be that easy. Um, this is gonna be uh, you know. So funding sources is my point. Um, I, I, I'm gonna leave it at that if that makes sense. And not, not to belabor this, but I just need to do that for the record. Mm -hmm. Mr. Walker, hopefully by the time you, you depart in a year, we'll have something solid mm -hmm. on this right here. That'd just to sort of lay this all the way out. Um, and so I just ask that. Yeah, I'll be staying in touch. Okay. All right. Be, yep. Miguel, anything else on the list? No, sir. That's all I have. Uh, 
Yes, anything else? Mark, do you have anything else? I don't know, sir. Okay. Uh, what I've got here, guys, is um, some funding sources. When I was in ACCG, Mike, I took the transportation funding class, mm -hmm. and they gave us all the different sources. But for the record, I'll give you guys uh, all, all, all the various sources that are available to us as a county that we can pursue. How about that? So uh, I'll give that to you. If there's nothing else that needs to come before this committee, let this meeting stand adjourned. Thank you guys. Appreciate the time and commitment to this. Thank you. Mark, are you good? Yes, sir. Thank you. One more thing. Yeah, one more thing. I got one question. One more thing. I'll take care. One more thing. Um, um, we, do, we do know that we will give an update on uh, the state of the work session on this committee uh, at the 6 o'clock meeting based on what we talked about today. Okay. Mark, remember? Give, my intent is to give a committee update. Doing the top of top about buses today that's still on the agenda. Okay. All right. Commissioner Wolf here? Yes. Okay, well, we talked about it yesterday that we would use it. What came, out of, what came out of our transportation committee should be shared through the full board commission meeting. Okay. I'm adjourned. Mm -hmm. Thanks. All right.